People are asking, how many women imams are they? How many Muslim women imams are they? And the answer is very simple. There are no women imams. Why? Because this is the command of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We take our Islam from the commands of our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't take our religion from those people that only a hundred years ago, women were unable to vote. We don't take our Islam from those individuals that in that society where women were unable to, to write books only a, a few hundred years ago. We take our Islam from our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that over 1400 years ago, he gave all of these rights to women. That at that time, when in the time of ignorance, that when individuals were burying their daughters, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave rights to women and he said that paradise is at attained through women, as in your mothers. That who has right over you, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, your mother, your mother, your mother. He gave rights to women over 1400 years ago. These individuals are teaching us about the rights that Islam gives, that the rights of women. Islam is the, the religion that gives rights to women. That Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, she is the individual who taught hundreds of Sahaba hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she is known to be one of the most learned compa companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most learned and one of the, the greatest scholars of this Ummah is Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha. Islam teaches us the rights of Islam came to give women rights. And then they say to us that how many Muslim Imam, women Imams are there as to, as, as to say that you are, they are going to teach us about women's rights. Allahu Akbar. When Allah says in the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in regards to inheritance, Allah says that the son gets what two daughters get. Meaning the two daughters get first, that the daughters get first and what they get, then the portion is given to the son. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives priority to women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِلذَّكَرِ مِسْلُ حَزِّلٌ سَيَّنٌ We're not talking about culture, we're talking about Qur'an. What the practice of people's culture is. We're not talking about that, we're talking about what Qur'an says. Qur'an says, لِلذَّكَرِ مِسْلُ حَزِّلٌ سَيَّنٌ That the son, gets two, the son gets what the two daughters get. Allahu Akbar. That first you give the daughters, then you say this is what's for the sons. This is what Allah says in the Qur'an Al-Kareem. Then people misinterpret this and they say, and they, they use this in isolation, meaning they take this out of context and they say, oh, the son gets double what the daughters get. But we have to understand the whole picture. That when we understand the whole picture, what is the whole picture? People say, why do the daughters get half inheritance that, uh, than, the, than the men, than the, than the son? The reason for this is very simple, is because for example, if the, daughter, if, if the inheritance is to be given and there's two daughters and one son and the inheritance, the daughter gets 20,000, one daughter gets 20,000, the son gets 40,000. The, the two daughters will get 20,000 each because Allah says what two daughters get, that's what one son gets. Meaning the son gets double and the daughters get half. But how is this, this fair? How is this fair then if the daughters get less? It's fair because when the daughter gets married, she has a dowry, she demands a dowry. The haq mahar, the mahar is, a, is what the daughter, what the wife asks for. Whatever she demands, the husband who wants to marry the, the woman, she, he must give. And so if she asks for 20,000, she asks for 40,000, she asks for 50,000, he has to provide. He has to give the haq mahar. And then after marriage, it is the responsibility of the husband to maintain the living of his wife. That if she is to go shopping and she is to go and spend money, she spends the money of her husband. Her husband must provide for her. It's not her own, it's not her right that she, she provides for herself. The right, it is right of the husband in Islam that he must provide for his wife. That the mahr that she gets, the inheritance that she gets, she doesn't need to spend it. She doesn't need to spend the inheritance, nor does she need to spend the mahr. That the husband provides for her. Whereas the inheritance that is given to the son, he must spend. He must spend when giving his mahr. He must spend from that when he, he has to maintain the, the lifestyle of his wife. Such is the, the rank of women in Islam. Islam 
has given light upon this subject. Over 1400 years ago, the West is, has awoken only 100 years ago and still they oppress women. They force women to, to walk on the streets, the society, the ideology of, of the non-Muslims and the form of thinking in today's day and age forces women to dress the way they dress. That is oppression. That is oppression to walk on the streets as, as they do. That's oppression upon women. That they are pressurized into doing such actions. And then they, say, they point fingers and they say, how many, how many imams, Muslim imams are they? We don't need non-Muslims to teach us our religion. We follow the commands of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.